on 2.59, has he done enough now? Did he have enough in him? Go Tim, go! Hello, um, the app's just updated and it's saying 2.59.52 which would be just amazing if it's true. I'm just desperate now for Tim to come through and to tell me that it is 2.59.52 and not 3.15 on the clock, I guess. Um, uh, the app is saying uh, 2 2 that's so, so all we need to know. That's so all we need to know. Let me just go through them because it's the, the app is saying 259.52. Stephen Cousin says, by the skin of your teeth. Yeah. I got all a bit distressed because I thought it was 3.15. But well, that was the gun time, you see, so... Um, exactly, I've been yeah. a bit numpty, not taking it... So uh, I never had to sprint so hard at the end of a marathon before. Because no. I was 1.30.01 at halfway, I had it on my, my watch. So I thought, oh, I feel tired from mile one, so... Then I thought, well, okay, I felt okay, my legs started to go, but there was a few da slightly downhill miles, picked up the pace, slightly overtaking people, and I gave it all I had for the last 5k, and then my, my watch was saying, like, it was slightly behind the actual timing, so I thought, oh, I've got two minutes to go to get over the line, all of a sudden I thought, oh no, I'm not actually over the line yet, so it's really sprint. But yeah, so so pleased really. Oh, so, so, that, so we're saying that that's official then, that you did it, my darling? Yeah. I didn't yeah. dare have a sense of relief to ask yeah. oh my God, I'm, I'm so relieved. Yeah. I was a bit teary when you, when I thought it was 3.15, and then Stephen Cousins really lifted my spirit. Yeah. Because I've forgotten about the gun He's got to do it now, he'll be mad. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Cousins, you've got to do some three now in Paris, or, or else, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well you, you don't beat 259.52, you can do 259.53. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, darling, so, well, that's right. Let's go and search your coffee, my darling. Yeah, let's go back to it. Oh, yeah. just amazing. Oh, hi, guys. It's just, I'm just capturing a little burst of something that Tim said earlier. I'm walking back to the start and uh, need a rest. I said, well, it's been a long time since I felt I've actually done better in a race than I thought I could do. My Garmin had been predicting 3.05 for months and all the other races I've done, it's actually been accurate, almost to the point I couldn't beat it. So I think that played on my head a lot. I was thinking, well, the sub three thing is such a big thing in marathons. So then I thought, well, I'm getting to the point now where you know, I'm not age graded. I need to do, I think my 250, my 233 age graded, um, my PB would have been a 258. So basically it had to be the best of shape ever I've been for a marathon relative to my age and I did halfway in 130.01 and I was I've been feeling I want to keep sort of making these hints on Strava that I'm not feeling very good I've been feeling a bit virally for like right, four weeks and then Sue got really quite ill and then her mum got Covid so it's quite possible that I had Covid gave it to Sue who then gave it to her mum so we'd all so I've been in my head thinking oh I'm not sure I can even get around so somehow I managed to find something from you know beyond halfway and then I was like halfway thinking oh, I've blown this now I'm just sort of I can run in if I can bring 309 from last time then even bring 320 from range then I kept ticking off 650 miles and even though my legs are starting to go I was thinking okay well I got to about five miles to go four miles to go I think okay well maybe I've still got a chance here so I actually pushed it pushed on a bit did about 635 miles then another one I looked at my watch and I think my watch was slightly ahead of the, of the mile of the kilometer markers so I thought, okay, I probably if I just keep going there, I might be right. And I saw like 42k, and then it was like literally the lines were like miles away. I had about a minute to go, so I think I almost had to do my sort of track day sprinting. So I must have done that last little bit in. I think it was 2:59:55 on my watch, and I think my official time was 2:59:52 on chip. I mean. I think in the old days I would have been annoyed not to break three hours and gone, but because I can't now obviously start near the front, you know, I don't think that the gone time is that relevant anymore. So, yeah, so I think well, if I never do a sub three again, I think, well, at least today I did better than I was have thought I was going to do. And it's not often I surprise myself in running, because I think so long now. And there's so many metrics now to tell you what shape you're in that it almost, it's a bit like the cyclists who go on power. They almost like ride the race before they ride the race. So. Just goes to show sometimes that you know if, if your watch is saying you can't do this, well, 
and you think you can give it a go and you know you, you can only fail um, but yeah that was that was hard work so um, and the Mrs G five eggs work would be that I think coming out on the Friday before a marathon on the Sunday is also a bit pivotal rather than coming out on the Saturday just because it was easier to go and get your number and all that kind of escapade and shenanigans on the Friday. So just a big yeah. thanks to two people obviously Sue for especially for coming out with me to, oh, to the island and all the Sundays and also to Matt, uh, Matt Reese the Welsh runner for some really uh, good training sessions. Not the sort of training I would normally do which I kind of feel like I know what to do but I think it was really good to have some different sessions and rather than just going out and running sort of three hours non-stop or running like long marathon pace runs I was doing a lot more sort of interval runs and I wasn't quite sure whether it was working but it clearly did because I've run better than I thought I would do so I think I would say to anybody who's stuck in a rut with their training go and seek out somebody whether you're paying for a coach or whether it's just someone you trust bang a few ideas of people and just try some different things because ultimately you improve by sort of putting a bit of stimulus in and often you improve by just changing things around so it's part of the reason why I like running different places almost to the point of obsession but you know I just get bored running for, for the same loop so you know vary your paces vary your sessions try a few different races although I've done this one twice in a row now but yeah but um yeah it just goes to show that sometimes you just need to find love for running again especially me I've been doing it 40 years now and you know I'm way slower than I was but today kind of feels like a bit like a PB because it was so much better than I thought I would do I mean I was literally a minute and a mile slower than my PB but it feels like I was running just as hard if not more so there we go so we're gonna go back now have coffee beer I don't know whatever yeah coffee and donut I guess when you're Tim I think just to say it's very generous of Tim to say thank you to me um, but I think Matt is the man who takes the credit for this one really and of course uh, Tim himself for just doing it even when it's not easy I'm pointing at me <laughs> oh, I'm pointing point at you as well no no no, no. See with the glasses on. Yeah, it is, it is quite sunny here. I've been able to have my top back as well. Which is, I was able to warm up. Yeah. That, was, that, that was a bit of spirited uh, generosity. Um, uh, handing over my top to Tim oh. earlier. I think the key thing is he's done it. And I, I, I feel a sense of personal relief. As Tim says, it's been a very dodgy few months really. Well, with Tim having had COVID in June and then that awful infection thing that we all had in October. And then, then another burst of infection. Well, you were still coughing all through the night. I was thinking, oh, she was going to stop. <laughs> well, no, I did point out that I was still coughing, but it was the cough that he gave me. Yeah. I didn't feel I needed to apologise too much. <laughs> and indeed, my 89-year-old mother with COVID, and she only went negative on Wednesday. So in all sorts of things, this has been a right on the edge. I think your, your, your family have built well, haven't they? They seem to last forever. Yeah, my mum's 89 and she's the youngest of six. Even Daisy's not been well. Yeah, the, the, it's a, my mum and all of her sisters keep going well into the 90s. Daisy's now on kidney, but the entire special house, kidney diet. Our entire house is full of aged, frail things that I'm busy nurturing, not necessarily with them being hugely appreciative, starting with the cat who's in kidney failure, who's on cat food at 18 quid a box and she just licks the jelly and then we have to have some dust that we sprinkle on it and that's a pound a sachet for like a teaspoon for the dust. pound for a bit of dust. I wouldn't mind but she only costs 25 quid in the first place um but she's you know she's the centre of our little world isn't she and then you know my mum's been proper poorly but she's being cared for by some you know a good little package of care at home and then Tim being good himself anyway. Anyway so thanks so much for we we'll do a sign off now so hope you enjoyed this one thanks for watching hope you found this interesting like and subscribe on that and see you the next one wherever that will be i'm not sure i'm going to do a race now i feel like i'm almost point of retirement but um some shorter races back ends over the summer i think phil york watch out because i'll be coming for you on the track and stephen's cousin's also a park run down at uh, worthing we've got uh, we're one all aren't we so we need to have our decider i might do it the week after paris marathon your legs are like it okay okay over like Okay, let's have a look at some metrics. These are the official 5K splits from the app. These are also the chip time ones, not the gun time ones, fortunately. So I started off with a 21.18, and you can see my pacing here was pretty consistent. I was literally exactly 130 at halfway, and I've also worked out what the marathon projection would be based on the cumulative time to that point, which sometimes you see that didn't actually have it in this app. 
So you can see that I was never too far away from three hour pace. I started off at 2.59.45, then we got slightly quicker. In fact, the after 10K, I was at my best projection, but it was only 2.59.16, so not exactly uh, banking time, as it were. And then by 15K, I'd almost lost all of that. And actually by 20K, I was actually back over half marathon. I was exactly right, but I was beginning to struggle then. And then the next 5K rallied a bit, got 10 seconds back. And then 30K and 35K, things were going the other way. And I was starting to think about, can I just get break 309 from last time or even good for age at 320 for London if things went really badly. But actually, with about 5K to go, I was thinking, well, actually, I'm not too far off here. If I really push, let's just see what happens. And if it doesn't work, well, at least I'll probably come in about 301, 302. So I picked up the pace. Perhaps the splits don't really tell the full story here, but the 5K from 35K to 40K was my fastest official split at 21.01. And I actually gained back some time, but I was still 17 seconds shy, well, 18 seconds shy. So I really had to cane this last bit here. And if we look at the Strava splits in a minute, you can see how much I actually improved even more than the stats show here. So in that last little 2K bit, which is normally when a lot of people sort of almost collapse, I was basically almost getting towards 5K speed. So I was really, really pleased with that. I mean, I don't think I've ever done such a hard effort at the end of a marathon. I did a negative split last time, but I was more under control. And this time it was kind of like a bit of an all or nothing effort. And yeah, for once it came off. So Matt was telling me later that he was looking at these splits and he was talking to Andy Rayner, the FOD runner, saying, I wonder if Tim's going to use his track speed. Well, basically, that's what I did. I think I just sort of basically saw that finishing line and thought, well, let's just give it everything I've got and um, see what will be, will be. Another interesting thing is that the GPS was always going a bit fast. So I've plotted here what the times were showing actually on my watch. So you can see here that after 5K on my watch, I'm about to do a bit of interpolation because I was actually using it in miles. I was actually 12 seconds faster on the watch. And this almost sort of grew steadily throughout the race. So I have to do a bit of a deeper analysis on this as to why so often you see about 26.4, 26.5 miles in marathons from the GPS. Well, I was, I've done other races like 10Ks and it's come up exactly 10K. So it's a bit of a puzzling one. I mean, Seville's quite open. There's a couple of underpasses where... GPS went slightly wonky for a while, but I didn't get any odd mile splits. So it was a strange one. The only one there that GPS was actually slower than the official split was that one there, but only by six seconds. But you can see all these other ones. They're about sort of 10 to 15 seconds out, and that one there was quite a lot out. So if I looked at my watch at 40K, I was like 128 quicker on the, on the GPS than I was actually. So I thought I had about a minute or so a spare to get a, a sub three. I thought I was almost on for a 2.58 and it suddenly dawned on me that I wasn't. That's why I almost had to sort of go into full scale, somewhat sprinting mode actually up the home straight to see if I could pull it back. So yeah, interesting in itself. So this is my Strava. I actually started my watch basically as I thought I crossed the line and I got 2.59.55. I think I must have just finished it slightly late, but my official chip time was 2.59.52. I don't think I've ever had so many kudos on a Strava activity before. I think I've passed 500, which uh, is rather pleasing. <laughs> it's interesting here looking at the peak place from Strava from source. If I look to see what, for instance, was my fastest 5K, then it comes right at the end of the race here. And if I look to see what was my fastest 10K, it also comes at the last 10K of the race. Obviously, I did a slightly negative split by eight seconds, so the half marathon is also the case. But you can see here that my 5K speed is around about sort of a six-minute mile. So I did the last half a mile in pretty close to 5K speed. And the last 400 was perhaps technically actually faster than my current 5K speed at 5.55. And then a mile there at 6.28. And all these splits were basically back-ended. So I think I'd rather buck the trend in a marathon and you know, speeding up at the end rather than slowing down. Maybe that's an indication that I could have tried harder early on, but I felt like I was going as fast as I dared. And really, I think this last bit was just sort of almost on, almost miraculous willpower, to be honest. Be able to look at some of the other stats here. Yeah, it's interesting here, the heart rate averaged 137, but you see it was sort of 
fairly flat lined with just a very very slight heart rate drift there until literally about there with about 5k to go as i said i literally just sort of almost like turned up the the gas and off i went it was a bit like um often it happens on swift treadmill rate runs where sometimes you just put the treadmill speed up and see if you can hang on so i was joking with stephen cousins that it felt exactly like that because he often does that and you can see him at the end of his swift runs looking like he's absolutely exhausted but he's just basically gone hell for leather so that's kind of what i did here so my pulse went there from about 140 to finishing at 155 and you know the rest of the race it was hovering around about 140 142 Cadence average 183 for the marathon, which I think is about what I normally expect to do. And you can see here, here are my actual mile splits according to my auto lap on the watch. Um, you can see that the first one was a slightly slow one, just a bit of um, a steady start, obviously quite a lot of traffic. So I, I realized not to get too wired at the start because you're often running a lot faster than you think you are so without really trying you do a 653 but i remember by the second mile i was thinking this is getting a bit hard work i think you got a slight of a leveling out of the course by then it does seem actually when you look at it you actually do rise up very very slightly so it was actually really really flat i mean i think this is just a few meters here and there but there were times when you were running into a sort of very gentle breeze i think the what was the the wind it had uh, eight yeah eight and a half miles an hour so that's you know that's sort of sometimes significant because there's, obviously you've got a lot of drafting I, yeah my actual position was one two five nine overall so yeah that was quite a lot of people to run with for sure so i think that any time in the race i was kind of ever running on my own so yeah quite a lot of drafting opportunities for sure so if we go back to these lap split cn on gps they were all basically around about hovering about 650 not too much and you can see at the end here so you've got this 638 638 639 and then down to 607 pace for the best part of the last half mile so that last three and a half miles or 5k more or less really did sort of put on, on the afterburners as it were and good job i did because i was so close to a sub three had i just sort of carried on about a 650 pace i would have ended up with about a 301 wouldn't i just very quickly here's the stride stat so i got an average power of 293 again next to no air power actually did have a few splits here towards the end which were like one percent but i don't think that's really working i think i actually might stop using the stride now i'm getting a bit frustrated with it it's not really doing a lot for me i mean basically the air power thing is not really registering anything and you know on a course like seville i didn't even look at the power once to be honest so i think i averaged about 290 previously when i did 256 so it does seem that the next gen one even though i'm not getting the air power is reading slightly higher anyway having said that i just remember that my weight is actually slightly higher on the stride i think it's 72 kilograms now compared to 71 that it might have been a couple of years ago so that that's going to be a factor as well but i just in the end of the day just find it a bit frustrating i can't really work out whether the air power is correct or not and I think I'm just too used to pace and I sort of prefer sort of flat courses anyway. But I do sort of use it in terms of like if I go uphill, I know so I can ease off and it doesn't really matter. So there's a few things that I've kind of learned from using it, which definitely has been useful. Okay, soon we have arrived at the equivalent of the expo in Seville. Not exactly very summery weather here, but uh, glad to be here.
Hi everyone, just come out for a little shake out round on Saturday afternoon. Here's the start up there tomorrow. Not feeling great at all, but I'll uh, see if we can uh, get over this and so I can get round tomorrow and just make do some justice. Okay, shakeout run done. This is where we're staying, the Monte Carmelo Hotel. It's where we stayed before, actually, in 2020, so it's quite near the start, certainly within walking distance. I pretty much got to the start of my run today. Yeah, just not feeling that great. Just feel a bit sort of virally still, so I hope it just is in my head, but the old legs and arms just don't feel quite right. But it's quite warm, a lot warmer than I've been used to running in, so that's not a good start, but at least tomorrow morning in the race, it'll be a lot cooler for the start and see how we go. That's all I can do really, isn't it? Okay, so kit check. We've got a Nike top on, we've got Nike trail shorts, largely because they've got these little pockets on the side here, which are good for gels, and there's a pocket at the back. I might take my camera without the stick on, just the camera itself. I've got the Nike Next Percent Vaporflies version ones in the mango colour. I use these for the Farmer Half Marathon, so they're lightly used shoe, only done about 15, 20 miles on them. Uh, I've got some Nike Socks on my favourite ones, these are a brand new pair, they don't do these ones anymore, they're the Elite Lightweight 2s, so I've bought a few off eBay. Right, better get going then, haven't I? Blowing thing because this lovely lady was blowing it all that way and they're now blowing it all this way. I don't really think that's a good strategy. It's a bit more about these upturned things. Two hours, two minutes, and I put cans of drink under them. I think that was a bit of a, a bit of dodgy planning. Last minute dot com. fast and furious now but the clinical team has got quite a challenge on my hands that's actually quite a small short recovery area it's 256 this is going to feel like a very long five minutes so we've got 
got Gary, Gary Peters. Yeah, that's right. Oh, no, time. Oh, excellent. Well done. Is that PB? PB, yeah. Well done. Thank you. I just hope we're going to see it too. That made two fifty nine fifty five will be uh, something to say in the sub three group, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think it just split by six seconds if I did that. All right. If. So Jan here, what was your time again, Jan? Uh, 2.56, I believe. 2.56, that was a PB, is it? That's a PB, yeah. What was your previous PB? Uh, three. Three hours. Oh, so it's up to three? Yeah. Oh, wow, 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 wow. So what was your halfway split? Do you remember? Uh, 126. Oh, okay, so, so pretty good pacing then. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm swimming yeah. for a bit faster still, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, well done, yeah. Anyway. And where did you come from? From Berlin. Berlin, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent, well done. All right, so this is Eric from Finland. Finland. Oh, okay. Finland. Yeah. What was your time? I think it was 2:58. So oh, marvelous, marvelous. Uh, Best sub three. But yes. Oh, marvelous, marvelous. Yeah. I think I just did 2:59 on chip time, yeah. but I need to be sure to get the official timing. So uh, I, I did 3:02 here uh, three years ago. Oh, yeah. I was there so, three years ago as well. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, you're happy today then? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well done. Yeah, so I'm getting older. <laughs> yeah. Well done. See you soon. So how did you do, Gary? Did you do it? Oh, stupendous! Wow, fabulous! I'm absolutely going to help. Um, I'm going to help the uh, the prophets of Seville out by having a, a glass of wine. We went to this pasta place last night, and I, I swear it was just full of runners. We've got same shorts, Nike trail. And I thought and I need the same shoes. We just got different colourways. Well, these, these are actually new ones I got from Nike. I got Nike. Oh, are they got? Bigger pockets. Yeah. Yeah, because I just shoes are special, boys. Yeah, take a picture of the shorts. <laughs> this is one. They're, um, they, they sold out quite quickly, but they, they only released them. They only released them. I said Frank Hill Keys, and if you've got anything that I did at the highlight, it's going to buy it. So I'll have to look out for them. They've got like a special little gel pocket in the back. You've like. no, got that, and then you've got gel pockets here. Oh, you've got, got the front. Alright, yeah. oh, you've got the back. You've got the zip at the back as well. Yeah, because I can't believe I'm filming this. I've got my phone in the zip one, and I put gel in here on my key, but sometimes I feel like I do with my GoPro. Well, that's it. Tim, Tim, will, Tim, Tim will be on Amazon trying to get a pair of them. Not a pair of them. I don't think that's what made this lovely man go five minutes faster, those shorts, in fairness. He's younger than me. Yeah, quite a few years of him, yeah. Do you need to have a discussion about the shoes? We've got the same shoes as well. Oh, OK. They, both, they provide X% version 1. Still my, they're my third marathon in these now. I have got a brand new pair of my these are, these are pretty new. This is my uh, half marathon, today's marathon, and a jog yesterday. So, so, yeah. so lovely to meet you.